Okay, so let's talk about submodalities next. So we're on page 72. And it says there the desired outcome is to be able to easily make changes in a client's internal representations using submodalities. The theory is that the submodalities are how we encode and give meaning to our internal representations. And so if we can change the submodalities, we can change the meaning of the internal representation. Now remember back when we were talking about the NLP communication model. We said we take in 134 bits of information out of the 11 million. And we have an internal representation which is coupled with our state, coupled with our physiology. And those things determine our external behavior. So if we can change that internal representation, we can actually change our external behavior. We said that internal representation was made up of six things. VACOG plus AD. So visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, gustatory plus AD, which was the self-talk. Now each of those things has a subset. So example, if I asked you, uh, when you think about your most favorite meal, do you have a picture? That picture might be color or black and white. It might be near. It might be far away from you. It might be in the middle of your screen. It sort of might be off to the top left or top right or whatever that might be. And when I talk about the screen, yeah, I just mean in your mind's eye. There might be some sounds that are important. There might be some feelings that are important. Well, these are simply the subsets that actually gives that picture some meaning. And so if we can change those subsets, if we can change the submodalities, then we can actually change what that internal representation means to you. And as such, change your external behavior. In fact, why don't we have a quick go at this? Can you remember a time when you were totally motivated? Can you remember a specific time? So can you remember a specific time that you were totally motivated? And just go and do that now. And when you think about that time when you were totally motivated, do you have a picture? Now take that picture and take that picture and move it all the way to the top right you know where if you're in your room made to the top right on the far wall all the way to the top right take that picture make it small and dark maybe the size of a postage stamp see yourself in that picture so that picture is far away from you up there to the top right hand corner small and dark the size of a postage stamp and you see yourself in that picture now, as you look at that picture, how motivating is that to you now? Probably not much. Now, you see, what we did there is we changed some of the submodalities. Not for everybody, but for most people. Probably, if they're thinking of a situation that was really motivating, they were probably looking through their own eyes. The picture was probably big and bright, it was in color, and it was nice close to them. So what do we do? We change some of the submodalities. We move the picture further away. We took it up there to the top right. We made it small and dark. And you see yourself in the picture as opposed to looking through your own eyes. And so changing those submodalities suddenly changed the motivation in relationship to that picture. So let's go ahead. Let's just put it back the way it was. So in a moment, not yet, in a moment, let's imagine that that image comes back to you at 100 miles an hour. Boom, it hits you and you're just going to step right back into it and put it exactly the way that it was before. Are you ready? Here it goes. One, two, three. Zoom. And there comes that picture. Boom. Step right back into it and put it back exactly the way that it was before. Motivation return? Well, if you're like most people, then the motivation would have returned and, you know, you'd be motivated about that picture again. So that is simply 
the submodalities or some of the submodalities that we've actually looked to change there. Okay, so let's look at some of the techniques that we can do within submodalities. And we're just going to look at this page 72, briefly go through each of these, and we're going to come back and we're going to talk more in detail about each of these. So this is just going to be an overview first. Now the first thing we do is contrast of analysis. And this involves finding the drivers, which are the critical submodality. So the driver is actually the submodality, the difference that really makes the difference. And we do that by comparing two internal representations for the submodality differences. So example, maybe the person liked ice cream, but they dislike yogurt. So when they think of those two things, think about how much you like ice cream, do you have a picture? Think about how much you dislike yogurt, do you have a picture? There's going to be some differences in those two pictures. The next thing we'll talk about is mapping across. So this involves discovering the driver. So we've got done contrast of analysis. And then the mapping across is where we change the submodalities of one internal representation to the other. Example, changing the submodalities. Let's say they liked ice cream, but they disliked yogurt. We can actually help them to change the submodalities of ice cream so that it has the same set of submodalities now as yogurt in which case the client will dislike ice cream it's almost like just like doing a copy and paste we're going to copy the submodalities of one internal representation and paste it into the other i can also do the reverse here where maybe they like ice cream and they dislike yogurt i can actually copy and paste the submodalities of ice cream onto the submodalities of yogurt so in this case now they'll start liking yogurt as well now, this is an amazing technique next we'll talk about swish patterns and this involves uh, finding and replacing one internal representational picture with another so this directionalizes the series of internal representations so that the desired state is more common as an example we will look at somebody who does nail biting and so replacing that image of them wanting to bite their nails with maybe them rather stroking their hair or rubbing their chin and so instead of them biting their nails they'll bring their hand up and they'll rub their hair or rub their chin another submodality technique is the dissociative technique and so this involves shifting viewpoint or viewing a specific internal representation from a dissociated position. It's frequently used to take the charge off of a negative emotion, as in the phosphobia model. So we will look at how we actually get rid of phobias as well. Next, we've got perceptual positions. And this involves shifting viewpoint and viewing a specific internal representation from one of three different positions. So first position is looking through your own eyes. Second position is looking through another person's eyes. And this is usually the significant person in the event. So let's say that you had a disagreement with somebody. You would run this uh, disagreement or this conversation through your mind at a later time. First position is you in the agreed disagreement second position is you take on the position of the other person and third position would be totally dissociated and it would be like you fly above the entire event and you're looking down and you're noticing the conversation between those two people who are having the disagreement and this is very useful for incorporating new learnings so we're going to talk about each of those at the right time as we move through the training. Next, let's first see how we elicit these submodalities.